Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Whitling's Prototype. This is episode... What? There we go, Thunderbutt. <clears throat> episode number 24. We just started on the camera system, and so we're going to spend a bit of time... The first thing I want to take care of is the variable camera zoom. Uh, that should allow the user to use the scroll wheel, scroll in and out, get a nice, nice lerp there, a nice transition. And so let's just get that working first. I do believe currently um, we are just multiplying by this distance. And this distance is actually the length of... It's this length here. So we should maybe erase that. The there we go. Distance. <clears throat> So, as always, first thing, let's get it snapping there. And I think it is mouse scroll delta, that's it. And I do believe it's the Y. So we're going to need a couple of variables here. We're going to need a min distance, a max distance, and <clears throat> I guess a click speed. That's something I'm not too sure about. When it comes to different types of mice, some of them have a click that has a very set amount of scroll, and other ones have a very smooth scroll. So I'm actually not sure how to deal with that. I have a click mouse, a click scroll wheel, so it should work pretty simply for me. Let's make a header here. Start organizing these a little bit better. Now I have a min distance. Let's say that's three. Oh, that end bracket got out a little bit wild there. And we'll say a max is something like 8, just for testing. <clears throat> and then we need a tick. Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's just do a print out and see what this mouse delta is. So we just got one and negative one. <clears throat> okay. Only two options. And we should call this scroll wheel tick distance. And let's do something like 0 0.2 for now. I'm not sure how that's going to feel. And we'll multiply the scroll delta by that. And so once we change distance, we're actually going to need to recalculate the target transfer. Well, begin easing to target. I mean, sure, why not? Let's just... Wait, where do we multiply by distance? We don't multiply by distance. Very interesting. So, let's get the normalized version of this vector. And then let's multiply it by distance. <clears throat> That seems fine. And shoot, why not? Let's just begin easing to target. Target.
Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, we've done something terribly wrong. We're definitely not. <clears throat> uh, let's clamp this distance here. So the value is this, and then we've got our min distance and our max distance. Oh. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Point two might be a little bit small, and my mouse wheel is backwards. Which I find very strange. So let's negate this. Cool. Nice. And you know, just to be safe. <clears throat> Let's do a previous distance. So I'm going to store a copy of this variable. And then I'll say if previous distance does not equal distance. So if we're not, if we actually moved the camera inside of the clamped range, then we should recalculate and do the, the lerp. Otherwise, we just hang out. We do nothing. Nice. <clears throat> what about something crazy like a two on the scroll wheel tick distance? I mean, everything is one unit in this game. Why not? Why not just lock that down, right? Nice. That looks pretty good. That was super easy, like I expected it would go. So I guess let's start talking about rotating the camera around the cube. Okay. So we actually do have this variable starting camera offset direction. Maybe we could just call this camera offset direction. Because with this Euler, um, I don't know why I put air quotes around it. We have a vector three that we can convert into a quaternion. And therefore we could just start rotating around. Well, that's the question. How are we going to rotate around the cube? Because we've got our 45 degree angle that I'm sticking with for now. We'll have one rotation this way, one rotation this way, which is not how the cubes rotate. The cubes rotate like this. I was considering that we just have 90 degree rotations I guess um oof. Yeah, that's a problem. Cuz I'm thinking so this is like a, a we're rotating around the y axis. That's not going to be any mind bending or anything. It's very usual game camera mechanics. However, if we have a cube and we rotate the camera 90 degrees on the camera forward, 
that means we're going to get something goofy like this. Right? It should be sideways. I don't know. I guess let's just try it, right? That is always the best way to do it. And this is a prototype, so we're just going to hack this in. Get key down, key code, right arrow. Oh, dang. Well, okay, right arrow, sure, sure. Right and left will be easy. Let's get those done. Easy. <laughs> Let's rename this variable to camera offset direction. Oh, geez. This is a little bit tricky. I don't want to just lerp to that new position. Because what's actually going to happen is I need to rotate the camera around this cube. So here's my cube. And here's my camera. With the eyelashes outside. And we're looking at the center. And I want to rotate 90 degrees. These are not good lines. I want to rotate 90 degrees around the Y. But I do believe that this Y is going to change, right? So this should be local. Much like we're doing the cube rotation. And here's another problem. <clears throat> With the snap, it would be pretty easy to do. But we actually want to get this smooth lerp going. So we're actually going to need to take this offset, which we already have, and we should slurp it to this offset. And as the slurp happens, we're going to keep recalculating the position based on the new current camera offset. Kind of tempted to put this into its own script. Um. Well, let's not. And I don't think I care. Rotation around. Ugh. I don't know if I want a separate timer. I'm really tempted just to make a timer class with some delegates like we used earlier. I think that would be quite useful. Maybe I'll put that on the list for next time. Well, let's 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 start with what we know. So we're going to have two quaternions, a start and an end.
Oh, just writing what I read. Rotate timer. Uh, that does mean we'll want to serialize a field. I mean, we could use the same easing curve. I think that's fine. Well, we'll use the same easing curve. Maybe a different dura duration. Oh man, why'd you do that? And we'll start it off at 1, just so we can do it nice and slow, watch how it happens. So let's see, we need to calculate the start rotation is quaternion dot Euler start offset, camera offset direction. And this is normalized, so that should be fine. Let's take a look at our cube rotator. Rotate by start rotation equals target rotation. OK. And this is going to be zero. Let's just say 90. Oh, geez. We need a quaternion dot Euler here. OK. And we'll set is rotating true, rotate timer equals zero. Okay. Yeah, almost all of this code is exactly the same, except for like the uh, the update, which would be this code here. And then the on complete, which would be this code here. Actually, just this code here. Hmm, interesting. Makes you think. So let's do a generic, uh, what we call this. Uh, generic easing class. Let's make this a to-do, and let's put it in our to-do.txt. This is something I could very much use. No, nope, camera controller. Okay, so is rotating, rotate timer. And this would be rotate timer over. Do I have a rotate duration? I do. Nice. Ooh. Okay. So let's make a current rotation. Ooh, you know what we could actually do? Let's call it the offset direction is equal to quaternion.slurp start rotation, end rotation is output 
And then we'll convert that to Euler angles. So this should give us our camera offset direction. And let's see. Uh, we'll set the position equal to the target dot position Oops. plus what did we call that up here target to camera oh we can get rid of these prints here that was a happy test And we'll tell it to look at the target. That was a lot of typing, not a lot of testing. Let's see how it breaks. Oh my, nice. What the heck happened there? Is rotating should start as false. That's the default value of a bool. What did I change? I changed nothing. Oh, camera offset direction is zero, zero, zero. <laughs> I changed the name. That is a really bad offset direction. Wow. Well, that math is absolutely terrible. What did I do? So, Let's try normalizing it and scaling it by the direction, oh, distance, that's it. I guess I'll need to recalculate target to camera, won't I? Let's pull that into a private function. And we'll pull, I think it's only this Jung. Now what does this exactly do? <clears throat> Camera start. Ooh. Camera start. Oh, it's just this transform position. Where else am I using that? Boom. Boom. Ah, I do need to save it into a variable. Okay. I think we could put this in here. Calculate target to camera. No. No, let's not. Let's just call this function here. And so I want to calculate target to camera. You know, in here, I'm just going to use this transform position. The current position. I don't want any crazy saved stuff. Uh, 
This is actually not what we want at all. <laughs> oh boy. Camera offset direction. Sure. That makes sense, right? Take the target, add the camera offset. This camera offset should rotate. Let's make sure other businesses still work. And right. Wow. I think we're going to need something much different than the Euler 90. Um, let's go to the drawing board. We've got this angle. Um, say, coming out here, across the corner. And I actually want to rotate it to coming out of this corner. That doesn't look like 90 degrees, but my scale and drawing are usually pretty terrible. So I'm not going to believe that. Um, hmm. Let's look at Unity for some visualization help. Oh yeah, that would be 90. Nice, okay. Got a question, everything. <clears throat> so I know, for instance, that my start vector unnormalized is one, no, negative one, positive one, negative one. And all I essentially want to do is negate one of these, right? I guess I just have to decide which one to negate. One step at a time, let's try rotate by, not quite what I want. So here's our start rotation. And I could say end rotation equals Oh, that should not be zeros, that should be one. This is actually looking kind of like a dot product to me. That returns an angle between, that's not what we want. Let's go back. Let's use our, oh. Let's 
So the start is target.position. The end is target.position plus start rotation dot Euler angles times three to make it long color dot red ten seconds and we'll go from red to green a little bit backwards in terms of stoplights. Whoa. Whoa. Um, let's turn off But where does is rotating equal true? Did I delete that accidentally? So we turn off the rotation. I hit it and nothing should pop off. Boom. Okay. Cool, cool. Where's my camera? Dude, these are so wrong. Dude. This red one's not even coming out of... It's coming out of the center. Point five seven negative negative. Whoa, now. That is still goofy. And this is supposed to be rotating by 90 on the Y? Well. That's the thing. Red is aligned on X and Z. The Y is off by quite a bit. Like I imagine. First of all, this line should be coming up at me, directly at me. I do think it should be this. I don't even know if we're going to use quaternion rotations. We might still have to because this is all going to be local rotation. Ooh. What if we rotate it around start rotation dot up? No. That's a transform. 
Dang. Maybe we need a from to rotation. Starting to get desperate here. Temp camera offset direction. I can't do this, can I? Times equals negative one. Hey! Oh, no, that's not. Oh, oh, I can. I can. Nice. Okay. From to rotation, from start rotation to quaternion.euler temp camera offset direction. Oh, this takes two vector threes. How interesting. Let's try normalizing both of these bad boys. <laughs> oh, hey, green is looking good. Green is pretty much, oh, that's close. Ugh, no, why are you off? Why are you off? But green's looking good. Let's try this. Temp camera offset direction normalized. As you can see, my camera skills are pristine, magnificent, unimpeachable. Oh yeah, this is what I want. This is all I want. Start. Oh, it's looking right. Right towards my camera. End. Right over here. So we've solved the mystery of the directionality, but that doesn't put us any closer to our quaternions. Hmm. You know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it a little bit early tonight. It was a fairly long day, and uh, I think after a little bit of rest, sleeping on it, maybe drawing some more on the blackboard, I should have a better idea of how to get this working. But our original goal, we finished in like 10 minutes, which is always very exciting. So uh, that's it for me today. My name is Billy Graben. This was Whitling's Prototype Episode, 90, episode 24. I hope you all make cool stuff.